couple words. Um, we are so fortunate to have come from a community that provided a very supportive and nurturing environment. We not only lived together, but we were taught by example to share our resources and work together to achieve common goals and objectives. The meaning of real community has changed drastically over the years. Today's definition stems from a fortress mentality of gated communities where people rarely take the time to connect with one another. In fact, they seem hardly to realize that neighbors exist. So today I rise to speak on behalf of my granddaughter, Camille. And I must first applaud you, my neighbors and my peers, for recognizing the need for community and creating it. I commend you for coming out of your comfort zones stretching your faith, challenging your doubts, and reconnecting with one another in order to revitalize community. We have tried to paint the picture with one single stroke at a time, but it's only through that shared experience that the next generation will truly know and appreciate community. After all, how will our grandchildren and children know what community tastes like, what it looks like, what it feels like, unless we can create it? We must let the word of God, which states, to whom much is given, much is required, continue to motivate us toward good work. We must now, right now, gather up our remnants, which are our memories. That includes treasured photos, relics, stories told, lessons learned, assets, gifts, and talents, and move forward. Psalm 127 verse 3 states that children are a gift from the Lord and they are a reward from him. Some communities may view children as liabilities, but ours has always seen children as an asset. Verse four of that same psalm goes on to say that children are like sharp arrows in our hands, and we want them to hit the bullseye. So, we, as a community, together have to rear back and we have to make sure that our arrows are going in the right direction. Each and every one of them must go in the right direction. We want all of our arrows to be on point so that they hit the mark just like Sierra. No matter what, we will never be put to shame at the city gate. Our children will make us proud. And more importantly, their accomplishments will be pleasing to the Lord. Before leaving for Guyana, I asked Camille to give me a few thoughts of her own to share with you. So I'll be giving you quotes from her personal journal. The first one, in the words of Camille, goes like this. I believe that this first quote is a word of wisdom for our honoree today, Miss Sierra Estela. So proud of her. Camille says that one of the greatest lessons that she learned is that the solution to feeling of inadequacy, weariness, fear, and doubt is community. And that is what you all have given Camille. Sierra, please know that there are going to be some moments for you too. But that solution can be found in community. And you got one. You got a community that 
has a foundation of love and support just for you. Don't you ever forget it. And also, please remember that you can create your own community just like Grandma Joan and Miss Earlene and Miss Phyllis have done. You can create it when you need it, wherever you are planted. So when you're afraid, just go for it. And whatever it is that makes you afraid, do it anyway. Do it even if you are afraid, because your community stands with you. And more importantly, the Lord is with you. And he has empowered you for such a time as this. Camille's second quote has something for all of us. She says, I am truly inspired by the mantra, if your dreams don't scare you, then they just aren't big enough. <laughs> it is through this message of faith and knowing that there's something greater to experience in the world that I press towards the mark, bringing my community with me. So this evening, I want to first of all thank God. I want to thank God for all of you. I want to thank God for a community that thought it not robbery to give out of their hearts so that my granddaughter could make it to Spelman College in Atlanta. <coughs> I want to thank God that you have given Taylor, Camille, and now Sierra an opportunity to dream a dream big enough to scare. An opportunity to move forward and experience the world at large in order to make a difference. But more importantly, you have given them an opportunity to fulfill the master's plan in their lives. Thank you. And remember what Jesus himself said. If you've done it unto the least of them, you have done it unto me. Thank you. Thank you.